Uh, hey guys, right, so stage 12 now. Uh, this is a recap. Last stage, we knocked out a couple of boats with air support, nothing too fancy. You'd be pleased to know that this time around we get to fight against submarines again, which are a lot more interesting. Let's see what Doc Master's got to say about what we've just done. Well, that's pretty cool. A hundred thousand steals. Since we're normally getting between ten and twenty thousand, that's really not bad going. The game does something a bit weird with the currency a little bit later on. There's a couple of stages, so I won't give it away, but um, yeah, the money's quite pointless before long. For a change, the creepy guy isn't in there. Now, I did faff around in here a little bit, but it's not something you really needed to see. Um, I've got a sound break. I'll show you what it does when we get into the actual mission. I don't use it very much. And the only reason I kept this bit in the video is because she says the weirdest thing. I'm rich, yeah. Thanks. Great. Anyway, let's get back out in the water. Okay, so as I said, I've got something called a sound break. Uh, what that does is it disables your opponent's radar, so if they've lost you and you hit them with that, they won't be able to find you for quite a while. Um, that's your fighting AI opponents. I don't know what the point of it really is, but uh, you've got 100,000 steals. So might as well put something on the ship. And we've got a ram as well, which never really used because it never really get into that sort of range to, to hurt things with it. But nonetheless, we've now got a spike on the front of the boat, which is quite cool. And now we're going to go after the Federation sub called Vinor. It's quite a quick submarine considering its speed. But again, uh, didn't find the, anything other than the standard missiles. Um, well, the, the standard missiles seem just fine with this. So let's get to it. At the moment, the reason we can't hit them or track them is because they're silently navigating and I think they're just hovering or 
whatever you would call it being static so, so it won't pick them up so just gotta well wait to be shot at really okay it's quite a big sub quite an easy target because it's so big and we've gone red we've been hit by a um yeah i think we have been hit by a sound break here So we can get a rough idea of where they are, but in terms of all the little squares that, you know, show you where targets can potentially be marked, can't do that for a little while. But it's no biggie. Yeah, see if we can get a volley on them early. Armor's so good on the ship now, they really need to belt us hard to do any real damage. Oh, more fish. This happens a bit. Um, this is what I've mentioned a few times throughout this whole playthrough, really. You normally attack your opponent, turn 180 degrees, fly past the mist, fly past the mist, or swim by a mist, um, just like this. So, you know, it's a shame that the, uh, the combat normally ends up being like this, but we do get a few lucky shots early on here, so it doesn't last too long. Another real advantage that the standard torpedoes have over the rest of them is they're really quick to load. The others have about 15 seconds on them, which is quite a long time to wait. Let's see if we can get behind them. If we can get behind them, then this won't keep happening. There we go. Now, though my ship isn't the quickest at turning, he'd have to turn quite dramatically for me to completely lose them. Now, the ship is heavy, but uh, we have got bits and bobs on it now, which you know will let it turn quite quickly. So we've got a good, uh, quite a balanced ship. So that means now when it tries to turn away, he's not going to have much luck. That's a good hit. I think one or more of those should do it. There we go. Well, that's not a federal submarine down. Excellent. Okay, struck a pinball machine. Great. Um, excellent. Okay, well, yeah. Join me for uh, join me for round twelve. We can sell the pinball machine.